So as a motivation, let us recall the situation in two, two dimensions, 2,2 two supersymmetry. The situation in four dimensions will be exactly the same. Conceptually, it's the same story without any difference, and even the proofs, the strategy of the proof is the same. Actually, even the proof is conceptually the same for all results. But of course, in four dimensions, you get more complicated structure, richer structure, more information, more nice things. So it will be interesting to go to the four-dimensional theory. So in 2D, start with a 2, 2 superconformal field theory, and you write the superconformal index, which is elliptic genus, which has this form, and is independent of Q bar, is a holomorphic function of Q. J0 is the left R charge, and so on. And notation, I think it is explained here, it is clear. So this is an index, it's a superconformal index, which means that it is a quantity which is invariant under continuous deformations of the theory, provided this de deformation preserves superconformal invariance. You can ask if you can do something better than that. You can see this as a family of quantities parameterized by these two complex numbers. And you can ask the question if, for some value of these uh, parameters, the index is actually more stronger than just a superconformal index. That this is invariant under a more general class of deformations of the theory, in particular deformation which breaks conformal index. And this leads to the idea of specialized superconformal indices. That is, you specialize the index to some value of the uh, fugacity such that that particular index is invariant under the formation of the theories which break conformal symmetry, although they should preserve supersymmetry, otherwise you have no index theory at all. So n is an integer. And you consider this, where you put this fugacity z equal to e to pi n, which is 1. But in fact, this is not an entire function of z. So this is, depends on n in a trivial way in general. This is independent of q. Now, you can prove just by standard techniques of uh, Witten index theory. And so it's a set of numbers labeled by n. And it is, in fact, an integer just by modularity of the starting theory. You just write the index as a trace, exchanging space and time. Now, these indices are more robust than the general index here because they survive massive deformation of the superconformal te theory. I perturb the theory outside by adding a Relevant uh, deformation, I go to a massive theory, I get a, a non trivial renormalization group flow, but these indices will remain constant along the renormalization group flow. At the end, we get a massive theory in the infrared, and the massive theory in the infrared is characterized by a BPS spectrum. We have many sectors that the BPS spectrum splits in many. A sector labeled by i and j, where i and j go from 1 to m, where m is the number of Suzy vacua, which f a central charge, which is antisymmetric under the exchange of i e j. It is a complex number. And for each sector, we form a BPS operator, which is just an m by m matrix in this case. Which, is, which has this property and there's this change of i and j, and which is written like this, where n i j is simply the number, the absolute value of n i j is just the number of BPS states, I mean here really BPS multiples, in that sector. The sign here depends on several things. It is the corresponding phenomena in two dimensions that in four dimensions lead to the uh, Gaiotto, Moore, Naisky, quadratic refinement. You have the same story also in two dimensions. Then when you have this operator, which are defined sector by sector, you get something which combine all sector by taking the product of these matrices, 
in an order which is anti-clockwise ordered with respect to the phase of the central charge. And this symbol here means just anti-clockwise order. This matrix M is what we call the 2-2 two -two quantum monodrome. It is just an M by a matrix in two dimensions. Now, in two dimensions, we have also a chiral algebra associated to this problem because the 2,2 two superconformal field theories contains a topological sector. I just twist topologically the theory. And I get a chiral ring, and I can add the grading operator in the conformal limit. And I can consider just uh, the character of this chiral algebra over a module, which is the chiral algebra itself, C module over it. So I have a character here. Again, the character depends on the complex parameter, but I can specialize it to this. And just as before, while these characters are defined only at the superconformal point, the specialization has a meaning, can be computed, are well defined even if the theory is massive and are independent of the massive deformation. So, in two dimensions, we have a relation between the superconformal indices specialized, the BPS spectra, and the chiral character. We have three objects, which are the three. Uh, object in the title, and they are related, essentially have equivalent information, and indeed the specialized indices are equal to the trace of this uh, BPS matrix M to the N, N in is an integer, and is equal to the specialization of the character of the chiral algebra, which is here in two dimensions a stupid algebra, but will be interesting for the so in particular, the specialized superconformal indices can be computed in the infrared just from the BPS spectra or from the way the ring behaves, which is purely algebraic. But for a given superconformal field theory in the ultraviolet, we get many different BPS spectra, which depend on the particular deformation we, can, we do. We can deform in many ways. We get different infrared theories with different BPS spectra. And these different BPS spectra are usually called BPS chambers. But all the BPS spectra we can get are restricted by the condition that this trace should give me the superconformal invariant, which are independent of the deformation. In particular, trace n to the n should be continuous across a wall of margi marginal stability because on the two sides we have the same ultraviolet superconformal theory. And indeed, the wall crossing formula is just the statement that the specialized superconformal index exists. They are well defined. This gives a condition for m, which is just the full information you have from the wall crossing formula. The problem of this talk is to find exactly the same relation, superconformal indices, BPS spectra, and chiral characters, but in four-dimensional and equal to two quantum field theory instead than in two dimensions. But everything will be essentially the same, except that the structure will be much more complicated because everything will be infinite dimensional, essentially. So we start from the first ingredient, the supercold formal index for a 2D four-dimensional theory. I guess we are, okay, this is it, which is an expression which contains three fugacity, P, Q, and T. The ER, these are the generators of the symmetry. Here I've written the dictionary will not depend on beta, as always. This is just for converging regions, but everything is independent of beta. And what is interesting for us is that this index here can be given a geometrical interpretation as the partition function on an off-surface. The off-surface is a complex manifold, which is topological S1 times S3, so compute the index in, with some fugacity, the partition function on S3 with some fugacity, and uh, P and Q are just the complex, the complex structures, parameters of the surface. The partition function 
for a supersymmetric theory will depend only on the complex structure of the surface, not other details. And for off surfaces of this class, the complex structure are parameterized by two numbers, P and Q, which are in the unit disk. Well, the puncture unit disk. And this is the definition of the my off surface. It is essentially this relation with Q and P being these two parameters. But we have a, a, a further uh, fugacity t, so we have to insert a fugacity t explicitly in this game. So we have the path integral on this geometry with an explicit insertion on the operate, of the operator to this fugacity here. As in two dimension, what we want to do is to specialize this index to get something which is robust against breaking superconformal invariance. Let me start with an intermediate specialization, which is for technical reason. I said t equal q p n plus 1, where n is still an integer, so I get this. We still depend on two a complex fugacity and an integral va uh, variable n. And here we have various possibilities. If n is 0, this is just a partition function on the off surface of the theory with the original uh, with and topological twist, the one which gives me the Jones polynomials. And so this is purely topological, depend on the topology, but not on the complex structure, so it is independent of Q and P. If I take n to be minus 1, I get the Schur index, which was defined by Gader, Estelli, Razamat, and Young, and it reduced to a character of a two-dimensional chiral algebra, which was defined by the same people, Estelli et al. And since it is a character of this algebra, a two-dimensional algebra is independent of P. It is just a fun, an holomorphic function of Q. For general n, you should think of I and P Q as analog to the function we have in 2D with P and Q, but uh, variables give you a non-trivial dependence. And in order to get something which is invariant, we have to specialize even further this thing. This is, again, well, th th this is an analogy between D equal 2 and 4. You can do this argument with D anything. So let specialize further. So I specialize just the same way I did in two dimension, where I had the first variable set equal e to pi i n, but here, for convenience, I set already n here. So this is just the same, but written in this form. So this is the index I get which is now a function of q and n. And as before, this, uh, part, this indices as an interpretation as a path integral or a partition function, and is just the partition function of the n equal to 2 in four dimension computed in a degenerate limit of the off surface. Just take the off surface of before and take this limit of that geometry, you get a singular geometry, in fact, a non-compact one, of was compact, but in this limit they compactified, and you get this geometry here, together with the fugacity corresponding to this factor here, and this is uh, what is called, well, it is the Melvin cigar, which is this geometry times S1. Now, this index is the same index which play this, is this n equal to specialized index which play the same role as I n in 2D, and is an index which you see very easy by the standard manipulation which is preserved under all the formations, even the ones which break conformal invariance. And is now an infinite family now of indices which depend on Q, where Q is in the unit disk. And indeed, just as in two dimensions, the fact that IN was well defined was the wall crossing formula. In four dimension, you just write a condition that these indices are well defined, or if you wish the partition function on this geometry is well defined, and it is just on the nose the same as the conservative solvent wall crossing formula in 
for the nation. So everything remains conceptually the same. But this geometry here, the partition function of this geometry here was already studied before in a paper with with uh, Bafa and Nasky, and so we, in the massive case, and so we can borrow from that. So let me take now, after the deformation of the theory, I get a massive theory and go to the Coulomb branch of this theory. And here I have BPSTs, as before, as in two dimensions, which are characterized now by the charts, we take the place of the sector, I, J, I had before, and also they can have a spin here, charge and spin means, in fact, charge and spin of the lowest component of the BPS multiplet. It has a central charge, which is an additive function on the charge lattice, the lattice in which the gamma take value, the mass, and then you have, as before, the BPS phase, which is the argument of the phase of the central charge. To each sector, that is to each charge here, you associate a quantum operator which is analog to the finite matrix MAJ of two dimension, which is defined by this, is essentially a quantum dialog or a product. A product here, you, I need to take the product over all particles or BPS particles I have in that uh, sector with that charge. It is an element of the quantum torus algebra, where the quantum torus algebra is generated by operators which satisfy this algebra here, where gamma, gamma prime is an antisymmetric pairing on the charge lattice, which is given by the Dirac pairing, electromagnetic Dirac pairing. So I have this, and just as before, I define the quantum monodromy taking the product of these uh, sector operators on all sectors and ordering the product in the anticlockwise way with respect to the phase, just before, and I get this. And this is the 4D quantum monogamy. And again, calling Sobelman wall crossing in this formula is obvious. It's just the fact that the conjugation class of MQ is in inverse. However, in 4D, if we are along the Coulomb branch, we have, in addition to massive BPS particle, also massless BPS particle, which are just the BPS photon, the infrared BPS photon, which have charge zero in, from the east and have spin plus minus one, the first component, which is the photino. And so I have to add here a factor to take care of these things, which are, however, central in central uh, in the quantum algebra here, so it is just a C number factor, which depends on Q, but is otherwise totally trivial. And this is standard. R is the complex dimension of Coulomb. Now, this script quantum monodromy, which is just the same essentially up to normalization, I take the traces to a power n, and these are the formations and wall crossing invariant of the theory. And so should be indices of the ultraviolet superconformer field theory, since take the same value for all massive deformation. And the analogy with 2D suggests that the traces to the hem should be the same as the special I indices, which are just this limit of the standard index. So, we can compute the specialized superconformal indices of the ultraviolet theory just by infrared information, that is, by PPS spectrum. And the proof of equalities is essentially obvious because both sides of the identity have a part integral representation as a partition function on a geometry. This is defined by this geometry. This is defined by the degeneration of the off-surface, which is this. But these two spaces are the same. So that is the this fugacity is inserted in both cases in the same way along the same cycle. So it is just taking the degeneration of the off-surface and see that this geometry we had before when we defined these things. Indeed. 
a special case of this, ident uh, this uh, identity was checked by Cordova and Shaw before for the case n equal minus 1. In that case, this is the Schurich index, which has a stronger property. In particular, you don't need to put p equal e to the 2 pi i, because this will be already independent of p, so it is an even stronger indices. And then, in that case, it is just the vacuum character of the 2 chiral to d chiral algebra defined by Rastrelintat. So this equality was shown in this paper before, and what is done here is to extend this to all integral a. Let me see. Okay, let's okay. I hope that it's R to P. So let me consider the case of the simple class of n equal to two theory, at least conceptually, that is the, the Lagrangian n equal to theories which have a weakly coupled Lagrangian formulation, which are super conformal. You have the index as this form. Or G is the gauge group, F the flavor group, and you write just this, where IV and IH are just the free superconformal indices, and the integral over the R measure of the gauge group just project on the singlets on this uh, uh, statistical distribution. So for Lagrangian theory, it is enough to specialize the integral, because this is where P and Q appear. You specialize it for free phi free hypermultiplets with a given frequency, you get this expression here, where this is the standard theta function defined like this. And notice that this is just the n power, where n is this n here, of the partition function of a complex p one half fermions into the mesh. Theta divided by eta, up to a trivial factor q to the minus one. Of the so, this is already something which suggests relation with two-dimensional conformal field theories. For free vector multiplets, the story is slightly more complicated because we have uh, zero moles, which are both of fermion dependent if n is positive or negative. And you need to cancel them by a procedure which is essentially the same you have in superstring theory to cancel beta gamma zero moles. You do just the same things. So they find, and after that, you get a finite quantity which is like this, where this is the root lattice of the gauge group. So for free or abelian gauge theories, the, this equality is just tautological because the same expressions just on the nose are just both the specialized indices and the, you just write this in this form and this is just the product I had before defining the quantum monogamy. In the Abelian gauge theory, you have just this integral and so everything is tautological. What is not tautological is this equality for non-Abelian gauge theories. Think of the simple non-Abelian gauge theory as you do with four flavors. The BPS spectrum consists of W bosons, quark states, but then you have infinite towers of ions of uh, unbounded mass, unbounded electric charges, and so on and so forth. So in the quantum monodromy, you have infinite many factors besides the obvious one, which give you a very complicated operator. And you need to prove that the factor of all the bunch of ions is just one, that the full contribution of all this uh, infinite tower of state is just the operator one, and so you can neglect and you get the same. Again, this was uh, uh, checked before for SU2 super QCD by Cordoba and Shaw for the special case n equal minus one, so the story is not surprising, but it is technically difficult to prove the quality. The third ingredient is chiral algebra. We saw one example, the free hypermultiplet, 
which for n positive was just a partition function of n free spin one half chiral complex fermions, which is the character of the chiral algebra of a chiral algebra with central charge equal to n. If n is negative, we get the absolute value n of free spin one chiral bosons changing the, the partition function in one over the partition function for a free theory is just interchanging boson with fermions. So for n positive, we got a good unitary two-dimensional theory with this central charge. For n negative, we get a non-unitary theory, which has the opposite central charge, which is negative. This result here, although this is an example, but we will see the general case, this is a general result, which is true even in the Lagrangian case, and we will see that is true in the case, which is due to Rastrelli et al. So if I start with a four-dimensional superconformal field query, which has central charges C and A, then the special I index is a character of a to-do chiral rational conformal field theory, which has a Virasoro central charge, which is 12 N C, where C is the four-dimensional central charge. If N is less than zero, then C to D is negative, and the rational conformal field theory is never, ne is never unitary for N negative. For N positive, it's usually unitary, but we have no result in general. The most uh, important case was N equal minus 1, which is the sure case, which is, of course, negative. And what we get here, it is minus 12C, which is exactly the central charge, and in fact, the full chiral algebra, which was introduced by Rastrelli and collaborators. So for n equal minus 1, it is just the story of Rastrelli. But we have an infinite uh, story for all integer n, positive and negative. Now, the special i index here is, in particular, a Q-series. It is some power series in Q with some coefficients IN, which are integers. And given a Q series, I can define a concept, which is this effective central charge by this formula. Essentially, I suppose this to be a character of a conformal field theory. I use uh, the Cardi formula backwards, and uh, from the behavior of the coefficient for large N, I deduce a would be central charge, which in fact is not really the central charge. It is central charge minus 24, the smallest uh, dimension of a primary field, which for unitary theory, and also for n larger than zero in this case, is just the central charge. And, is just, and so it is given by this formula with n positive. And for and negative is given by this formula here. We're seeing A are these uh, numbers here, the four dimension, and this is always positive if uh, N is negative. In addition, if my fourth dimensional theory is a flower group, I get in this uh, two dimensional character here a Katzmudi character or level, which is minus one half, K is the a central charge of the four-dimensional uh, current algebra. And so the special I indices became Katzmudi characters of one kind or the other, if I have a flavor group or related to that. And we can ask, since this is very similar to a, a character of a rational conformal field theory in two dimension, if it enjoys modular properties as a character of a bona fide two-dimensional rational field theory should have. And you can show, at least for Lagrangian models, that modularity of the integrals I had written before are equivalent to asking that all gauge beta function vanish, that is, that the theory is superconformal in the infrared. And this is, of course, correct, because we started with the assumption that the theory was superconformal, and our expressions make sense only under that case. Let me speak about the related setup, which is different but related. That is a compatification of 
the four dimensional unequal to theory on a geometry which is T2 times T2. Now, this procedure gives me in two dimensions, in this T2, always a theory which is unitary, if I start with a unity theory. And this is a full quantum field theory in two dimensions, not just an index computation. It is always unitary and satisfy all the good properties. So the way you do, you start from n equal to 2 uh, Euclidean superconformal on SU2 times SU2. This makes sense only if it is conformal because we do a partial topological twist, but we twist with the U1 part of the uh, R symmetry group, not the US2R like in Witten case. So Witten uh, twisting makes sense in general, but this makes sense only if this is non-anomalous, which is just the same as asking the theory to be conformal. So you split this group like this, and you twist by this combination of operators where n is an integer. And so what you get, if n is 0, you just get a 2,2 2 theory in R2, which is in some sense the obvious compatification. If n is equal to minus 2, you get a chiral theory, which has symmetry 0, 4 on this T2 or 2. And in all other cases, it is a chiral theory with supersymmetry 0, 2. Really, this is correct for n even because you see if n is odd, I get one quarter spins, which make no sense. So since it is important to extend this also to odd n's, we need to have an extra global U1 in order to make a twist on that to compensate this mismatch by one quarter. But in the example, you can. So, if we start in four dimensions with a free theory or wiki cup Lagrangian theory, I mean a theory which has a Lagrangian, we do this, you can do field by field, and you get like this. The 4D multiplex becomes 2D02 multiplex. So for n bigger than zero, the vector multiplex becomes a vector multiplex plus n plus one chiral multiplex of zero two in the adjoint for the hypermultiple became n Fermi multiples in the corresponding representations. If you have n negative, the vector multiple gives still a vector multiple, but now you get that essentially Fermi and Chiral multiples get shifted one into the other. The gauge group in 2D will be the same as in 4D, and the flavor group remains the same. And you have just this gauge theory with the same group as in 4D, which is coupled with Fermi and Chiral multiples of 0, 2 in the suitable way. And you have also the J superpotential of 0, 2, which comes just by. This is a chiral theory in general. Well, it is always a chiral theory, so it can be anomaly anomalous. And you check that the condition of being anomaly free in two dimensions, sense is just equivalent to the condition of being conformal in four dimensional things as before. So this is the same. Now, we can consider the left moving Virasoro central charge of the 2D. To theory, left moving is the part which is not supersymmetric, so it is the central charge you see in the elliptic genus. So this means just the effective central charge of the elliptic genus, which is the central charge of the left moving. And it is given by this formula. You have a formula for n positive, one formula for n negative, n h is the number of multiples and v of vector multiples. This is true even if the theory is non Lagrangian with the old suitable definition of what you mean by the number of NH and V in such a way that you get C and A correct. And you check that this is the same as the, chain, the effective central charge of the special I index or the trace of the monodromy for the same M and for all N, just identically. This is always positive, consistent with the fact that this theory is unitary. This result is not accidental, and for Lagrangian models, it's obvious to understand when you have, because 
The traces is just given by the integral, this partition function, which is given by the integral I had before, where this is essentially the product of all uh, free things. And the elliptic genus for this theory is given by this in the partition function of this geometry, which is just an integral with the same uh, integrand, but a different contour, which is in this case the prescription given by Jeffrey here, one for the contour. So the two things are certainly different. For instance, for n negative, this is unitary, and the other is not, so it cannot be the same but have the same C effective because they are part integral representation with the same integrant and different prescription. And the effective central charge depends only on the integrant on general grounds, not on the contour, just because it is the value of the leading complex at point up to using identities from mm -hmm. Kirillov Nam about dialogramming. The, the, uh, it, you just see how many vector multiples you have in which representation you just write the uh, product. It does not depend on the many, uh, it's just the. Like uh, you, you have, the uh, before I wrote this explicitly, uh -huh. this, and this, you just do the, 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 the localization computation. The localization computation gives you the same integral, but the prescription from the uh, contour is different. So, this is computed by localization, and this is computed by saying, since it is an index, the theory is a marginal coupling that I can send to zero, so I get the free theory, essentially, and it just remains the trace, which is the projection implementing the Gauss law that the states are neutral. Here, instead, is really a localization computation, and uh, for Lagrangian theory, it just depends on how many I pay multiples and vector multiples you have in which representation, and they are just the same rule for the same n with that dictionary. And you know that it's very easy to show that the, 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 the effective central charges are the same for two expressions which have the same integrand, even if the contour are different. And in this case, since this theory is unitary, the effective central charge is the central charge. So the central charge of this theory is equal to the effective central charge of the other. For n positive, in fact, you have a theory in two dimensions, which is this. But, but in two dimensions, from the side of the special I indexes, we have just this character. We don't know anything on the right movers and things like that. Instead, the compatification gives you a quantum field theory which has all the ingredients and everything. So this is different, but related. And so this was for Lagrangian models, which are not very interesting. I mean, everything is almost autological. You have the same integrals, and you just need to, well, you need to prove that in Lagrangian theories, you can forget all towers of Dions. That is hard, but once you know that, everything else is trivial. So let me go to the new Lagrangian examples. Well, we, we understand something, particular new theorems about hypergeometric functions. So as an example, I can consider GG prime superficial conformal in uh, theories which are labeled by two AD dinking diagrams, G and G prime are two simply lace dinking diagrams, and the particular case in which the second dinking diagram is just A1, this is just a Gire Douglas model of type G, where G is in ADA. We know the central charges, the four dimensional superconformal central charges of these models which I write here under the condition that the G and G prime have co-prime cosetter number. For simplicity, I know that the formula in general, but will take more lines to write because depend on the common divisors of the two cosetter numbers in a complicated way. And R is the rank and H, and this is C, this is A. 
And let me list the non-trivial flavor symmetry of at least of Gira Douglas, the ones which are not written here have no flavor. This U1 should be A1, the same is print. And this is the flavor group. This is the central charge of the flavor group in four dimensions. This is the conformal central charge of the flavor group. In particular, we know from Rastrelli et al. work that the n equal minus 1 case, the sure case, contains the, 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 the index, a 2D chiral algebra. Well, the 2D chiral algebra contains the current algebra of the flavor with a level which is minus 1 half k, where k is the 4D central charge. So this is the models. So, computing this from the BPS spectrum, we know the spectrum, was computed by Waff and Einstein and myself. It is given by in the minimal chamber where we have the lesser number of states. It is given that by the product of the two um, ranks of the two groups, G and G prime, times the cosector of the second divided by two. And they have these charges here. I can identify the charge lattice with the tensor product of the two root lattice. And this is like this, where one is simple. And so this gives me, and this is positive root. Using this BPS spectrum, we can describe explicitly MQ and write the trace of uh, the monogamy to some n as an explicit, although very cumbersome, multiple q hypergeometric sum. <coughs> we know techniques to compute the effective central charge of any hypergeometric sum, however complicated, and uh, this is the result. For n positive, I get C to D, the theory is unitary on the, 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 the two-dimensional rational conformal P theory is unitary, so it is equal to CFT. It is given by thus, where 2R is the correction in the case H and H of G and H e prime is not, uh, are not co-prime. So this expression here, which is rather complicated, but it is always equal to 12 NC, where C is equal to the central charge in four dimension. For co-prime, you just check with the previous one, otherwise define C like 12, div this divided by 12 N. For N negative, it was not computed in general. It was computed for this class of model. You can compute, but this thing is this boring. We did some example, not the most general one. And you got this, which is this expression as predicted in terms of the central charge of four dimension, and it is equal to the effective central charge of the minimal models, PQ, with 2 to L plus 3, for n equal 1, minus 1. And this is as predicted by Rastrelli et al. In particular, you check from C and C effective the value of the minimal conformal weight, and it is just as expected from the general T. So the the, I stress that these computations here are done from the infrared theory. I know the BPS spectrum, and I make computation, and I get quantities that I compare to the computation done in the superconformal theory and the ultraviolet, and we get always correct uh, matching, which just means that this identity is correct, <coughs> which it is will be strange not to be, since it is essentially tautological. Let me do some explicit chiral characters from BPS spectra. So let, the, the simple case is A to N, A1, and N equal minus 1, which is the sure index, and we know what should be, because it was computed with different techniques. I mean, Rastrelli et al. computed this in the ultraviolet from the superconformal field theory. We compute here from the BPS spectrum, and 
we need to get what he got. So this is the expression for trace n minus 1 in terms of BPS states in the minimal chamber. It is a very complete Q hypergeometric sum in 2n uh, integral variables, so very complicated. But uh, using various techniques from the theory of Q hypergeometric function and identities and uh, Andrew's uh, identities, you rewrite it as a finite product, which is like this. It's just n, the product of two n uh, polygamous symbols here. And this expression here is exactly the Fergus Nakshani Oguri way of writing the vacuum character of that Birozora model. So this is just the fact that this is equal to that proves that what we got is equal to what uh, Rastrelli got, and everything is correct. And, and, and everything is analytic here. You can do the, the sum explicitly. For even the situation, well, it is the same, but now I am computing n plus 1 trace, where we have no prediction because no one computed from the other side. You get this expression here, where C is the Cartan matrix of A to N minus 1. You go down by 1 in rank. And this sum was computed by Fagin's Stoyanovsky for any Cartan matrix here of any simple Lie algebra. And what you get is that this is the vacuum character of the loop algebra of the maximally potent subalgebra of G1 at level 1. In other words, you take your algebra G, you write like you do the standard Cartan decomposition, then you go to the loop algebra and you make the central extension and you take only things which came from here. All other currents are set to zero. This will return in a moment. And so, in this case, we get just the vacuum charity of this algebra where G is the affine SU2N. If I go to the odd case, which is more complicated to compute, but you get the same story with just instead of SU2 and S2 and plus 1. So it's just in terms of the rank, it is just the same form. Instead for trace m to the minus 1, odd and even are very different. Let me uh, go to this case. Uh, probably I have here. Yeah. Consider instead the characters of the Argyre Douglas of type DR, which are much more nicer. We, here we have a phenomenon that I call C saturation. If you recall on Wednesday, we had a talk about n, n equal 1 uh, extension of supersymmetry of 2n equal to 2, cases in which n equal to 2 enhanced to n equal, n equal 1, enhanced to n equal to 2. And the story was like this. You start in the ultraviolet with n equal to 2 theory. You give a perturbation, a very special perturbation, which preserve only n1. And you get here a thing that a priori should be n equal 1. But instead, you discover that it's enhanced to n equal to 2. So the in infrared fixed point is magically n equal to 2. This, the examples were for a certain class of n equal to 2, superconformal theories in the ultraviolet you start. Here I'm talking exactly on the same class, same characterization, and we will see what are these. So, you, in this language, you start from one superconformal theory in delta violet, which has some character, you end up in the infrared with another n equal to 2, which has also some characters, and you can ask 
is there a simple relation between the two characters? So what I call C satirization is just the definition of what are the good ultraviolet fixed point we start, and they are good for my pulses too. So in 2D, we have the Sugavara formula like this. And for a unitary theory, if this is an equality, in general, for unitary theory, you have greater equal here, because you can have other degrees of freedom besides the uh, current algebra. But if you have equality, then the current algebra is the full rational conformal field theory. And the characters of the rational conformal field theory are just as smooth characters. Now, since we have a 4D to D dictionary due to Rastrelli et al. between a two-dimensional central charge and a four-dimensional central charge, which is like this, this becomes like this if I have a flavor group GF. Recall that the group is the flavor group. So if this equality holds for an n equal to superconformal field theory, I say that this is G-saturated. Why I call G-saturated? Because you have this experimental fact that if this is true, you can always find a finite BPS chamber, that is a chamber with finitely many hypermultiples and nothing else as BPS states, such that the uh, hypers are 12 times C. That is, if you compute C just from the BPS spectrum, thinking of them as free fields, you get the correct C. Although A will be not correct, but for C, the BPS spectrum saturated value. And in general, you have an, an inequality, so this is really a saturation of inequality. If this is true, you can see that for n positive, you have a general formula like this, that the trace of the monodromy to the n with n positive is a theta function of some lattice, which depends on n and so on, these are the flavor of fugacity, divided by Q to 12 and C. So this, the, you have essentially eta to the effective central charge, which is the central charge in this case. So you have just a bunch, if you wish, of free fields, if you bosonize the theory, as many fields as you have central charge. So for this class of theories, this is which are that, you have this formula here, and the only thing you need to find is the precise lattice you have here. So this is very magical because, in general, it is a very complicated story here. This is uh, what you expect from this story of C uh, saturation. On the other hand, what you have from the actual spectrum here is a very complicated Q sum over infinite many things, well, many things. So reshuffling this in this form is not obvious. And in particular, for this class of models, as we will see, they are C-saturated, so you have, you expect an identity like this, that the Q sum from the spectrum of this class of Algeria Douglas is of this form. And uh, this is very similar to an old conjecture in uh, Q hypergeometric function theory that you should have an identity between a sum of the form similar to this with some decoration and see the cartan of Dn and a theta function of this form. But this conjecture was very old because it was motivated by the geometric in or combinatorial interpretation of these Q functions, but was obviously wrong because you just expand the two sides of the proposed conjecture and just the first term is not correct. So the problem was what is the correct conjecture, the precise conjecture? The conjecture was essentially correct, but there was a small deformation in, in, in the formula, a very small change, but no one was able to find what that uh, variation was. So what this formula 
says is, well, one side is what we want to go. This is on general ground of that form, essentially from NAM work with uh, appropriate uh, definitions, and they should be equal. So this is the correct conjecture we replace the not precise conjecture people had. And indeed, when we come to this through the monodromy operator we just gave to Warner, we had the conjecture, so this is the precise conjecture, and in two weeks was proved the general case. Because once you have the precise conjecture, it is easier to prove than say there is a vague conjecture that something should be true. So now what I say is really new theorems and uh, proof in full. Okay. So let me start with Algeria Douglas with odd rank. Odd rank F SU2 flavor, F this central charge for SU2 flavor in four dimension. C is just N over 2. These are classical. You put here the number and this inequality, so it is C saturated. The sure index is just the vacuum character of SU2 at that level, because if it is saturated, the two dimensional is just pure current algebra, and then it is just the vacuum character of SU2 at whatever level you get. Here you get a negative level, so it is some less not standard, but it is in the mathematical literature you have, and you check, and everything is correct. And Trace uh, MQ is more interesting so, you, since you expect to, to be of this form. And indeed, after uh, we proved um, in the physical sense and then Wagner proved in mathematical sense that you have this equality, where this is very complicated to write explicitly in the original form, you will not write. And here C2N is just the Cartan matrix of A2N. So this is just a specialization of a theta function for the SU2N plus 1 root lattice. The most beautiful form you can have. The chiral algebra here is just SU2N plus 1 at level 1 plus some free scalars in order to get these etas in front. So this, in this case, and it's even better, you see, for n positive, you get unitary theory. For n negative, you get non-unitary theory in two dimension. Strangely enough, people prefer negative n's, but n positive are better because they are positive. They are really two-dimensional rational conformal field theory. If we consider even, even is trickier and was not correctly studied in the literature because as flavor SU2 times U1 with this central charge for SU2 and this central charge for the anomaly, the conformal anomaly, and it was thought not to be saturated, but it's still saturated because U1 gives me C1. U1 current algebra is just a free scalar, so if you put here the 1 corresponding to the U1, this is just saturated. And you get the same formula where now this depends on two fugacities just because the rank of the flavor group is 2, so you can put two flavor fugacity. You have an, a certain explicit uh, a lattice that I will not write that give you this, and this is really a theorem because Wagner proved it in full generality. To give you a flavor of this function, if you take the coefficient of v to the zero here, this is just uh, the standard theta function of the SU2 n root lattice. If you want other example, in the paper we computed uh, a very large class of example. So let me return to this. One particular case was this DRA1 model here. And you get here AR minus 1, A1. The current algebra here for n equal plus 1 is just affine SU 
are, well, specializing something in the, in the in the odd case for R odd is just this, otherwise, times u1 to some power will not consider free, I decouple free fields also here. And here is SU R restricted to the nilpotent part. So the relation is just that you take instead of the full Lie algebra just its upper, I mean, nilpotent part, and take the chariot of that, and you get the infrared story from the ultraviolet one. I don't know how this is related to the normalization group and so on and so forth, but the map between the starting data and the final data is easy. It is just you have the same Lie group, and instead of having all currents, you set to zero, all currents but the upper triangular one, I mean, the ones in NP. And that is it. Both level one, so nothing else changed. It is just that you take a subalgebra instead of taking the maximal nilpotent subalgebra instead of taking the full algebra. That is it. Okay, that is.